Right, what have we got today? Now, some of you might think, oh, I've seen one of these before. You've done videos on these. Um, I haven't. This is not what you might think it is. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, this is a Cybernet ZX-1. We've, we've seen one of these. Do look down the bottom, then you'll notice the just general electric sign. Now, this is actually, I know, can, I can feel from the weight, this is heavier. And probably the reason for that is the fact that it's probably, it's got the modulating transformer in because this is an AM radio. Um, it is obviously physically the same case as um, the ZX-1. And you'll see on the back of the unit that it's got the FCC ident on it there. You can see made in Japan and then the FCC code there, which of course in the UK you wouldn't have. Uh, it still has the same antenna and power connector on the bottom. And... Um, what we'll do is quickly put the ZX1 on the table side by side so you can see the physical difference. Actually there's no difference at all in the case in the displays or the cases. We can see there the two as I bring them up. Um, I can't see that there's any difference in there. Just as I said, just the badge on the rear. Um, this is obviously a, a UK uh, MPT1320 fm radio and this is an am radio but this one does feel heavier i'm just going to pop the two on the scales just to have interest right so the am radio is 579 grams and the fm radio there is 529 grams um i told you i could tell there was definitely a difference in weight so i'll need to very carefully take these knobs if you check that video out you'll see i use string to wind around there to carefully lift these knobs off if you want to see how i do that look at my latest zx1 video on the channel you'll see so i'm going to take all this kit off you have to take that that and that off before you before you can take it apart remove the four screws on the back and then it all comes apart and there on the back of the radio straight away we can see the shielding plate i don't think you get that on the FM version. I don't remember seeing it anyway. Uh, these aren't known for poor joints though on these radios. Um, they're very, very good in, in fact these radios. I've not ever had any problem. Okay, it appears to be working. We're powering it off of 12 volts. It's important not to overdo the voltage on these. Um, we have our squelch slider there, which appears to be working as you'd expect. Channel selector there and our volume on off here. And on our meter, we are getting about two and a half watts there. Is that it's about two and a half watts? I'll show you on the meter. Yeah, so we're on the lower scale. In fact, if we put it on the two and a half watt scale, you can see it's just over two and a half watts. There we go. So we might be able to get a little bit more out of it. Probably not, but we'll, we'll try, squeeze a bit more out. Perhaps we'll do that first um, before we put it into receive mode. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three. One, two. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Uh, looking at the uh, screen, I'd say that's looking fine, to be honest. All right, let's see if we can improve things on TX. Here we go to transmit. Let's drop in. It's going up, that's peaked there. Move on to the next one down. Let's drop down. And that's about there, that's peaked. So no, no, no advancement on the TX side, unfortunately. All right, so I found the AM modulation adjustment. It's just down there, down that hole. And you need to put a long sort of bladed screwdriver to get in there. Be a bit careful not to short the screwdriver against this plate when you're turning it. Right, we've got our tiny SA. We're going to use the tiny SA to generate an AM modulated AM signal to feed into the radio. And then we're going to connect the sign ad meter to the output speaker of the radio. And we'll check for the maximum uh, received audio on the meter but we'll also listen out for obviously the signal quality as well when we're tuning it up so we'll we'll pop a crocodile clip on the back of there to get the the um, the signal into the meter first we'll do a peak a peak setup first um, on this and then uh, we'll then just see how sensitive it is okay so we go to uh, the we tap on the screen and we go to mode and we go to switch to low out and um, what we want, we enter our frequency in first, which is 
M for megahertz. Okay, so that's got our frequency in. And then we need to set our external gain. Now I've got, it's very important with these that you put an external attenuator on them. I've got 40 uh, dB uh, attenuation on this. So external gain is, is 40 dB. Um, and then we can go on, once we've set that and we can set our rest of our details. So in the modulation we want AM and uh, on this, I still haven't updated the firmware on this, on this version of the firmware to get a one kilohertz tone it actually, the reference uh, is 0.95 of a kilohertz, so I'll put 0.95 in there, uh, K, and that's 950 hertz, and then that gives us a true one kilohertz. Right, we're set up. One thing some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed, I needed to set that to minus 40 dB, because you can obviously use these with attenuators. So. Um, obviously we're using it with an attenuator but you can use it with a signal amplifier as well but it's really important particularly if you're going into transmit mode uh, with these and I wouldn't de directly transmit even at two and a half watts even through a 40 dB attenuator because not, not for any other reason other than these attenuators aren't really rated for it and I don't need to anyway I'm just using this for receive but if you don't have some kind of attenuation in there and you accidentally press transmit on this you will blow this up there's no question about it so um, yes, yeah, just better to have that in there as a safety feature, right? Okay, so we're now set up. We have at minus 67 dBm, which is 100 microvolts, which you will know is a full uh, S9 signal on a CB radio, or as near as we think of it here in the UK, anyway. So let's just turn that on and see what we're getting on the radio. And there we go. We've got our signal nicely. Turn the volume up. And there. That's a nice bright signal. So we'll see what that looks like on the cyanide meter. And all we're really looking at doing is just getting the maximum peak voltage. Okay, so you can see we're just below the... I'm just going to turn the volume down a bit there. We're just below... If we set it on the 2, there we go. We'll set that on the 2. And for that same signal, we'll see what kind of improvement we can get by going through the receiver. I'm not going to show that on camera because it's going to be noisy. Okay, you can see we've squeezed a little bit more out of it there. So what we'll do now, we'll just turn that down. What we'll do now is we'll see how sensitive it is. We'll see how far how far down we can hear the signal. All right, we'll turn the speaker grill around the other way so you get a better idea of the uh, signal quality. So we're at minus 60, so we're 100 microvolts. And that's our, our signal, and we'll start to drop it down. So we're going to go minus, minus by minus 1. So we're on minus 84 dBm, which is 14 microvolts. Minus 90 dBm, which is 7 microvolts. Starting to lose it now, aren't we? Let's put that up a bit. Minus 100 dBm, uh, which is 2.24 microvolts. You can still hear it there, amazingly. Minus 107 dBm, which is 1 microvolt. Turn the volume up a bit. Minus 111 dBm, which is 0.5 of a microvolt. That's amazing. Let's keep going. We're right, right in the back of the box there, aren't we? That's as low as we can go. That's minus 116. You can just about hear it, so that's 0.3 of a microvolt. Um, that's pretty amazing. I'll be amazed if the President Randy is as good as that. Let's try it. But what we'll do is we'll just up this while we've got this on. We'll up it so we can hear it, and then we'll we'll just do a quick comparison. So I think the Randy's going to do the Randy's going to do minus 110 dBm, okay, which is 0.7 of a microvolt. So let's just see, listen to this noise versus the tone and then just see what you think the difference is between this and the Randy. Okay, and there's the same signal on the President Randy. So not really a great deal in it, is there? Not really anything worth shouting about anyway. And we're making the connection with the President Randy through the external connector, not through the antenna connector at the top, just... Uh, if anyone asks so that's what we're doing there 
Right, that just needs the squelch. I have adjusted the S meter. The four bars is S9. So the adjustment is just down there for that. I have done that. Uh, and I think then this pot here is going to be the the squelch. So we've got our squelch set at maximum in this direction. We've got our 100 microvolt signal on. And we'll just adjust this till we hear it. There we go, just about hearing it now. So let's just squeak it back. There we go. And if we reduce the signal down from maximum, we should start to hear it. So we're gonna take it down in minus, let's just turn you to the screen so you can see that. Minus one dB. There we go. It's dropping off at minus 72 and coming in minus 67 that's pretty good isn't it so let's pop it onto the minimum setting so we'll turn the output off and we'll type, put this down to threshold it's just it's sometimes hard to hear threshold it's a very quiet radio and there's no signal on it there we go threshold is that's about right for threshold so let's see when it comes in we're going to obviously need to put a much lower signal on than this so let's take this all the way down to say a minus 115 dBm, which is 0.3 of a microvolt. So let's turn it on. Okay, so it's not coming in. So let's creep up in 1 dB increments. There we go. Go back one. Minus 109 dBm, this squelch is opening. That's 0.7 of a microvolt. And it's going off at minus 110. That's blooming good, isn't it? Wow, he's, uh, he's got a very nice uh, squelch on this. Um, very sensitive indeed on the low end. So yeah, it's a shame it hasn't got a bit more transmit power, um, but that, you know, that can't be helped. Um, very nice indeed, a very nice example. I've not ever tuned one of these up, although I'm very familiar with the, the case on these, but it just shows you how useful the uh, the Tiny SA unit is, and they do a bigger version. I think it's the Tiny SA Ultra, which has got a slightly bigger screen, um, but they are fantastic. You can do your FM, your AM, and everything with this uh, in terms of receiver setup. Uh, obviously, there's no Synab measurement on it. The, uh, there's no, you, I won't say modulation measurement. You can measure your modulation on it. It's a little bit slow. I tend to use the, uh, the SDR on the PC for doing AM modulation. Um, and yeah, it is a lovely example. Look at that, beautiful. I uh, don't see many of these ones here, because obviously this was an Ameri a set made for the American market. So you tend to see more of the Cybernet ZX1 version of this radio here in the UK. Um, but you know, it, th this board, this Cybernet board is absolutely a fantastic board. This, in my opinion, this is the best of all of the emergency sets this version on AM and the other version is LX1 on FM. I honestly don't think they can be beaten. They're, they are superb and they're so well made. Um, they're excellent. So yeah, a very collectible and nice unit which we can, we can send back to Dom. This has come through from Dom who also sent me uh, some walkie talkies kindly again. So thank you again Dom for that. Right, this will be Tyler's home base recording setup. The Rode King RKCB. Still a lot of uh, QRM round here, which is a bit of a shame. But I hope you'll get some idea of the difference between this, uh, the um, present round in the General Electric radio there. This is a, a lovely, lovely set. I really do like the uh, the way that the American market, um, like the style of their CB radios, I've always liked it. We've always been very boring and these have always been not. So um, yeah, more of this in the UK market, but you know, it seems to be not the case anymore. They, they're condensing everything down to small units like the T800. Because of course these are quite expensive to make like this. So there we go. But this is a good little radio, the RKCB. So uh, we'll find out what it, well, how it works just now. Right, we're in the car and we've got our little box of tricks. If you've not seen the video on this, uh, go back and have a look on the channel. I uh, don't know how bright that is. Okay, we'll get it to about there. Okay, so what we do now is, because we don't want to blow up this uh, nice AM radio that Dom has uh, sent in for repair, we all spin this supply, this round, to get our 12 volts. We can do that fairly quickly.
There we go, we got our 12 volts. Because I know from experience with this Nissan Leaf, you can get up to 14 volts out of this on the uh, auxiliary adapter. So there we go, we will not get any more than 12 volts and that will then apply to both radios, to both both of the sets, so that's good. Right, we're set up, we'll, we'll go over with the President Randy. We're about one and a half miles from home. I'm not sure whether this will work or not, I don't know, we're, we're gonna find out. So, um, the, uh, back at base, the antenna's in the loft, it's just a, a little serial antenna in the loft. And we're about one and a half miles, but there's lots of noise locally, so I don't know how well this will work. Right, we'll give Tyler uh, a try. Hi there, Tyler. I wonder if you can hear me okay. I'm using the President Randy. I'm using the President Randy uh, 3 out at uh, this new location. It's about one and a half miles across from terrain. Uh, but as you know, we get a lot of noise locally where you are. So I was just wondering how well you can hear me there. If you give me a good over with the quick brown box, jump over the lazy dog if you can, please. I can hear you pretty clearly. I can hear you pretty clearly. And also, the quick brown box, jump over the lazy dog. Okay, yeah, there's quite a lot of noise around uh, today, a lot, a lot of uh, QRM as we call it, but... Um, okay, that sounds good. Um, just give us another, another one of the quick brown pops jump over the lazy dog. Uh, stay recording and I'll swap over to it from radio and we'll get you back to the quick brown pop. Right, here we go, it's going dark on us. Well, hopefully the GE will rescue rescue us. I'm recording now. Oh, there we go, you can hear him. Okay, okay, Tyler, this is uh, your dad. I'm out in the car about... Tyler, this is uh, your dad. I'm out in the car about two miles away. Now using the GE uh, radio. We're on channel 23. Uh, I wonder how that sounds. Does it sound much different to the other radio there, Tyler? Or about the same or a little bit more scratchy? What do you think? I think it sounds... Uh... Sounds a bit different, but not really more... Okay, did you want to try going up one more channel? I think there is a bit of noise on here at the minute. Go to 24. Thank you. Right, how is that sounding on channel 24? Sounding a bit better now. Yeah, there's still some local noise here of some kind, but... Uh... Yeah, there's still some local noise here of some kind, but... Um, okay, that's great. Um... Right, I just need you to stay there for one more minute. What I'm going to do now is change the antennas. We're going to put a different antenna on the car and see what the difference is. So you can stop recording now and then stay by the radio and we'll start recording again in a minute, okay? Oh, I see the difference that makes. Well, Tyler, I wonder if you can hear me. Is it is it is it a lot worse now, is it? Yeah? Yeah, I see that. That makes a huge difference. Okay, yeah, you just, I'm just going to do a test recording then. The quick brown fox jumps over. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. I'm now using the the supplied antenna, the telescopic antenna, and it's a lot worse, isn't it? A lot, lot worse there. I can barely hear you. Yeah, I see. Oh, look at that local noise come right over the top. Whatever that is. Well, it's much quieter up on channel 26. You just moved and I've just put the, um, the squelch on. I've just put the Sirio back on now. Are you recording there, mate? Yeah. Look at the difference in signal. Such a massive difference in signal there, isn't there? I know there was a lot. Made a huge difference to the signal. Do I sound okay with you there, Rog? Yeah, you sound a lot better now. Yeah, I mean, this, this does sound so much better now as well, yeah. Uh, there's so much noise around here. Goodness knows what those signals are there, Tyler. Uh, and they really do make a difference to the quality, though. And uh, this channel is nice and clear. Now the sun is setting, a lot of the foreign interference is going away there, you see. Yeah. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Ah, listen to that. Sounds superb, doesn't it? Ah, that sounds absolutely superb. Okay there, Tyler. Thanks for your help. You can stop now and uh, go back to playing your game. I'll carry on, just finish off here, okay? Thanks again, mate. We'll, we'll speak to you in a bit. Okay, bye. A busy old road, this is. 
Anyway, um, that is superb, isn't it? I think you'll agree. Um, that's worked very, very nicely. Took it away when we found a clear channel there. That made a big difference, but um, the supplied telescopic antenna, not so great, that, is it? Um, yeah, that might be the difference between you getting help and not back in the day, mightn't it? The huge gain in that uh, Sirio antenna. Fantastic antennas those those are. They have, as I said before on the channel, if you're after an antenna for your vehicle, you can't go wrong with one of those. Um, and this little little thing, fantastic. Um, really, really great. Um, you know, can't fault it at all. Um, it's just, I've just turned it off, turn it on. 12 volts there. And it's held that nice and constant and just running that off of the drill battery still. So, uh, you know, like I say, really important with this radio in particular that we don't, um, uh, that, that we don't over volt it. And you can so easily do that if you're not sure. So, you know, they're really good little devices that those are. And, and like I say, if your battery drops too low on a lead acid, then you've got to, it will boost it up. So you'll always stay at that regulated voltage that you select. Right, anyway, on that one, it's been a bit of a longer video than I thought. I had to double back because so I forgot a lead, so that's why it's going even darker. And I'm going to go home and think I might have a pie and chips. It's a Friday, so uh, why not? Okay, if you have been, thank you ever so much for watching. I'm going to get out of here because it's really, really grim. And uh, we'll get this back off in the post to Dom, who sends me loads of stuff. He's great. So thanks again, Dom, uh, for sending this for me to look at. And I'll whiz it back in the post to you with that handheld, with that old vintage walkie-talkie. Right, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.